Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at noon. New at noon, a Fargo teenager is being charged with attempted child abuse after court documents say she yelled, quote, I'm going to kill the baby while fighting with multiple people and trying to grab the child. Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Jordan Schreyer. According to court documents, 19-year-old Justina Brownell was arrested earlier this week after threatening to kill her own young child. The girlfriend of the child's father overheard the threat while she was on a FaceTime call. Another witness then said that Brownell yanked the child by the feet and started slapping the newborn all over her body. Brownell was wrestled to the ground by another witness who claims she then got back up and started pulling at the child again before witnesses finally stopped the attack. Brownell was arrested in Fargo for felony attempted child abuse and terrorizing when police arrived on scene. She'll be back in court in mid-August. Also new for you at noon, authorities in Valley City are investigating a late night stabbing. NewsDakota.com says it happened last night around 11. The man who was stabbed was taken to a Fargo hospital, but he is expected to be okay. There's no word yet on the suspect. Police have been tight-lipped on this topic, refusing to answer our questions for much of the day. Stay with Valley News Live as we continue to follow this story. Let's check outside right now. It seems we got gray skies and some clouds. We saw the sun for a little bit this morning, though. For what we can expect in the rest of our forecast, let's check in with meteorologist Lisa Green. Yes, those clouds taking over parts of the Southern Valley again, and that's preventing that temperature warm up too. We're at 75 degrees in Fargo, and we have some sunshine south of us, so we're at 81 in Sisseton and Aberdeen, other places in the mid to upper 70s here in the valley. And here's a look at your radar and satellite map. You can see that line of clouds just basically streaming right over the Fargo-Moorhead area. And if this continues, we may not quite get to those uh, mid 80s that we were looking at earlier on. So we'll see if this continues or not. But there is a little bit of rain associated with the cloud cover uh, that we are seeing at this point in time. And there are still some sprinkles along the border, but other than that, most of us on the dry side here. As we expand the view, you can see there is a line of these clouds and showers stretching all the way back to southwestern North Dakota. Here's a look at your hourly planner. So this is uh, going to be a little bit different than what we're currently experiencing, but there are places in the valley getting some partly cloudy skies. And where we get more sunshine, we'll see temperatures that end up into the mid 80s for high today in the Southern Valley and there is a threat for more thunderstorms possible into the late afternoon and early evening hours and we'll have more on that coming up in your hour by hour planner and we'll take a look at the weekend ahead too coming up in your extended forecast. Look forward to it. Thank you, Lisa. A woman is facing charges of DUI and open container after authorities say she crashed her car into the ditch. The North Dakota Highway Patrol says it happened yesterday evening around eight on the south edge of Grand Forks. Authorities say 58-year-old Cindy Smithy was heading to a T intersection and then hit the ditch. She was taken to a hospital but is expected to be okay. No other vehicle was involved and no one else was in her vehicle. We're in the final stretch of some road construction in Moorhead. Crews are repaving the outside northbound lane of 8th Street South between 4th and 20th Avenues. The city plans to reopen that stretch of road tomorrow. And you'll see more orange cones on 8th and Moorhead by the diverging diamond exit as well. That's where three lanes of traffic are down to one, and it's creating quite the bottleneck in that area. Meanwhile, there's a new road closure in North Fargo starting today, and the good news is it's a one-day deal. 4th Street North is shutting down from 18th to 19th Avenue. The closure is for a water service repair, and it should be cleared by the end of the day. President Donald Trump took his attacks on four Democratic Congresswomen to the campaign trail with more shots at the so-called squad. White House correspondent Peter Alexander has the very latest. Representative Omar blamed the United States. It was the defining moment of the president's rally Wednesday night in North Carolina. the raucous crowd unleashing a new chant, send her back. Send her back. Send her back. A new spin on Donald Trump's 2016 rallying cry against Hillary Clinton.
The president zeroing in on Minnesota Congresswoman Ilhan Omar, an American citizen who left war-torn Somalia as a child refugee. Part of his recent attacks on those four freshman Democratic women days after calling on the liberal lawmakers to go back to their home countries, even though three were born in the U.S. and all four are U.S. citizens. The president trying to cast them as radical and un-American and the face of the Democratic Party. If they don't like it, let them leave. Let them leave. Omar tweeting her response, a poem by Maya Angelou. You may shoot me with your words, you may cut me with your eyes, you may kill me with your hatefulness, but still, like air, I'll rise. And they want to try and impeach. It's a disgrace. The president also claiming vindication after the House voted Wednesday to shoot down an attempt to impeach him. The resolution, how stupid is that, on impeachment? The vote revealing just how divided Democrats are on the topic. Most opposing the resolution spearheaded by a single congressman, Al Green of Texas, who argued Mr. Trump's racist attack on those congresswomen of color disqualified him from being president. If you did what the president has done, you would be punished. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has consistently counseled Democrats not to rush toward impeachment Concerned it could distract from the party's policy agenda and ultimately it could work to the president's advantage. In our consumer alert this afternoon, a hummus company is recalling almost 100 varieties of its chickpea dip that may be contaminated with listeria. Pita Pal Foods says the products were made between May 31st and June 25th and have been shipped throughout the United States. The FDA inspection at a manufacturing facility identified listeria bacteria. So far, no illnesses have been reported. Now, to find item numbers for the affected products, you can just go to our website and click on this story. Downtown is going to be busy for the next three days. It's the 44th annual Fargo Street Fair. The street fair covers eight blocks. New this year is live entertainment and more alcohol vendors have been added. And you'll want to come hungry. 40 different food vendors are there as well. And of course, there will be a ton of shopping with nearly 150 local artists. I think it really brings the community together. Everybody comes downtown and interacts with um, people from all over Far Fargo-Moorhead that they might not see every day. Admission is free, and for more information on times and parking, just go to our website. Coming up here at noon, sexual assault charges for Oscar-winning actor Kevin Spacey have been dropped. We'll tell you why. But next, Lisa Green is in with what you need to know for our Thursday forecast.